Ichthyosaurs have an enviable evolutionary success story for any animal, whether terrestrial or aquatic. They were among the first secondarily aquatic vertebrates, that is, they originated in water, lived for a while on dry land, only to return to water millions of years later, this time carrying all the difficulties of having already adapted to the terrestrial environment. Among the challenges faced by these animals on their epic return to the oceans was reproduction. But one of the world's most incredible fossils shows us an impressive aspect of the reproductive biology of an animal hundreds of millions of years old. This is the story of when reptiles gave birth in water. For hundreds of millions of years, fish were the only vertebrates in the sea. But long after placoderm fish and long before orcas, a group of terrestrial reptiles re-entered the oceans for the first time, replacing fish as the ocean's top predators. Its dominance lasted more than 180 million years, from the beginning of the Triassic to the end of the Cretaceous. Marine reptiles had to overcome a number of obstacles in the water, but none more important than reproducing and ensuring the survival of the species. Ichthyosaurs, which means lizard fish in Greek, are among the most famous of their kind and were the first fossil marine reptiles to reveal their mode of reproduction. Ichthyosaurs are not in any way, shape or form aquatic dinosaurs, however much they are glorified in the media as being so. Unlike dinosaurs, among many other things, ichthyosaurs had fin-shaped limbs and lived exclusively in water. They are a truly fascinating group, appearing in the fossil record almost 20 million years before the dinosaurs. They were among the first large extinct reptiles to come to the attention of science, mainly through the efforts of Mary Anning, who collected hundreds of specimens. The name ichthyosaur was forged at least 20 years before the word dinosaur was invented, based on the anatomy of the skeleton. We know that they evolved from a terrestrial ancestor. In life, the typical ichthyosaur, with its long snout and hydrodynamic body, looked like a cross between a shark and a dolphin. Some of their basal forms were small, more like finned lizards, while others came close in shape and size to blue whales. Because they are reptiles and have fins that superficially resemble those of sea turtles, it was initially assumed that they also went to the beach to lay their eggs. The problem with this hypothesis is that they developed bodies so specialized and well adapted to an aquatic environment that it seemed impossible for them to visit the beach without stranding. So did they lay eggs in the water like amphibians, or did they give birth like mammals? Considering that ichthyosaurs were the first giant marine reptiles and were successful at reproducing, with tens of thousands of fossils already found globally, understanding the mystery of their reproductive strategy is essential information for piecing together the story of how reptiles readapted to aquatic life. Our first clue to this mystery was discovered more than 200 years ago, when the first of many was found with small skeletons caged in its ribs. Most of these finds came from various Jurassic deposits near the town of Holzmaden in Germany. This association seemed to show good evidence that these animals fed on smaller members of their species. They were cannibals. This idea was widely accepted. However, as more ichthyosaurs were found with multiple little skeletons inside their bellies, with some containing up to 10 individuals, evidence began to accumulate to debunk this idea. A unique discovery was made in 1846, when Joseph Channing, a Greek collector who had one of the largest collections in the UK, studied a skeleton that had been collected in a small village in Somerset. That same specimen is on display today at the Natural History Museum in London. He identified a small skeleton, almost complete, preserved at the end of the rib cage in the region of the pelvis. The position of this animal skeleton was too far from the stomach area, so it couldn't have been the animal's last meal, a key piece of evidence for a live birth in ichthyosaurs. If correct, this would be the first fossilized pregnant female reptile. One study after another, the debate raged until 1990, 
when two major studies concluded that ichthyosaurs had been falsely accused of cannibalism all along. All of them were actually pregnant mothers. Lending plausibility to this interpretation is the evidence that none of the small skeletons appear to have been corroded by stomach acids, nor do they have bite marks. The chance that an adult individual would have eaten several cubs at the same time is minimal. That's when the interpretation of pregnancy began to make perfect sense. Today, more than a hundred pregnant ichthyosaurs, all of a particular species called Stenopithorhesus, have been discovered in the Hosmaran region. Most fetuses' heads point in the direction of the mother's head. Based on this position, it was assumed that, like dolphins and whales, the embryos were born tail first, and their nostrils emerging last, helping to prevent drowning during birth. Proving this theory correct and crushing any doubts that these animals gave birth to independent young, an impressive fossil of a mother in labor has been discovered. An extraordinary ichthyosaur, pregnant with quadruplets, captures the unfortunate moment when one of her cubs gets stuck in the canal with only its head still inside the mother. Horribly, the mother drowns due to exhaustion during childbirth, resulting in the death of not one, but five animals. Further confirming this tragic scenario, a Chohosaurus specimen with triplets were recently discovered in China. A particularly exciting discovery because it dates back to the early Triassic, around 248 million years ago, very close to the appearance of the ichthyosaurs. In this specimen, however, the embryo is emerging from the mother's pelvis in a head-first position, with a newborn preserved outside the mother, showing that she had already given birth to at least one cub. This suggests that the terrestrial ancestors of ichthyosaurs probably gave birth to their offspring by the head, and that early ichthyosaurs also gave birth in this way, which later became by the tail. This particular specimen represents the oldest vertebrate fossil in the world to capture a birth, even though these events happened a long, long time ago. The preservation of this moment in history has given us evidence of the reproductive biology of these long-extinct reptiles something that would never have been understood if it hadn't been for the sensational discoveries. Their ability to carry a pregnancy is probably one of the reasons for the success of the ichthyosaurs. This way of reproducing has many advantages, mainly that the newborns are usually highly developed and able to feed and defend themselves almost immediately. Whale cubs rely on the help of their mother's milk to develop, but as far as we know, ichthyosauruses did not. So they were every man for himself from day one. The babies were born equipped with needle-thin conical teeth, ready to catch squid and fish. Live birth has its limitations, especially the immense effort made by the mother, who has to catch and eat enough food to nourish the development of all her young until they are born. One of the biggest concerns should be a lengthy underwater birth, like whales and dolphins, these animals need to breathe air, which means that if labor is too long or if there are any complications, the mother would have to return to the surface to breathe. Perhaps this risk is why there are so many fossils of mothers with well-developed young. They would be at risk of a predator noticing their vulnerability or of drowning if exhausted enough. Immediately after birth, the cubs would also need to get to the surface quickly to take their first breath, running the same risks. With all its limitations, viviparity came with risks. But it was successful enough for a long time for extinct marine reptiles, and continues to be in aquatic mammals. But it was the ichthyosaurs that were the first large, secondarily aquatic vertebrates to make this important transition, an impressive feat of evolution that allowed them to fully commit to life in the ocean. This video is an adaptation of the text Life in Death, Life Birth in Pregnant Fish Lizards from the book Locked in Time by Jean R. Lomax, which has this one and 49 other incredible stories of some of the world's most revealing fossils. If you like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, and have a great life.